Hi everyone, this is Bonnie from Good Earth Spa, and today I'm going to be making cold process, oven process soap with you. The process is a lot like cold process soap when you get started. The main difference is that we're using our oven to force the soap to go through a gel stage. So the first step is to weigh out your water and your lye. And in this recipe I'm using 13 and a half ounces of distilled water and 9 ounces of sodium hydroxide. This is a 40% lye solution. This is using less water than you usually use when you make soap. Okay, there's my nine ounces of lye. Be sure to check my links below for all of the spots where you can buy all of the ingredients to make this soap. And you should know a little bit about lye safety before you get started, so you should have a basic soap making knowledge. You need goggles and gloves. And I also recommend you wear an apron to protect your clothing. So now I'm going to be mixing my lye into my water, and I'm going to hold my breath and then move this under the fan so that the fumes that come off can go up through the exhaust fan. You don't want to breathe them. So you'll want to stir your water and lye solution every once in a while to make sure that it dissolves very well. And then you're going to want to weigh your oils. Everything is done by weight, so you will need a scale to do this. And my first ingredient is 40.6 ounces of olive oil. You can use extra virgin, but I'm using pomace today. Either one should be just fine for this recipe. If you use metric measurements, convert this into grams. Next up, I have 16.3 ounces of coconut oil. When I make cold process, oven process soaps, I like to use olive oil because it handles the process very well. Next, I'm going to add 8.1 ounces of castor oil. Castor oil makes bubbles. So I am going to microwave this to bring it up to about 100 degrees. That will melt all of my coconut oil. And while I'm gradually bringing it up to temperature, I'm going to be stirring my lye until it's fully dissolved. So I'll see you in a bit. So now my oils and my lye are ready. Now lye doesn't really like to be super, super concentrated. 50% is about the maximum that you can even concentrate your lye solution. So 40% might be a little bit tough. If you are having problems getting your lye to dissolve, it would help if you continually stir it while it's hot. But if it's cooled down and you're seeing it start to recrystallize or you have solid pieces of lye, you can go ahead and warm the lye solution back up again and stir it so that it fully dissolves. So I am going to get started. I'm not going to add any scents or special things to this soap recipe because I'm just showing you the process of cold process, oven process soap. So let's get started. Starting off is very similar to the cold process soap. <laughs> Another thing too, when you work with a water discount like this, your soap is going to set up quicker. You're going to get to trace quicker. And that's especially true because I'm using pomace oil. If you want to slow it down a little bit, use extra virgin. That takes longer. Mm -hmm. 
So now you just want to mix it until it reaches a trace, just as if with cold process soap. And we have already have a light trace here. I'm just knocking those bubbles out. I'm using a different blender today. My other one broke. So I'm ready to pour this. I just like it to be a little thicker for my own personal preference. Now would be the time if you were adding scents, or if you were doing colors, or if you were adding super fatting oils. I'm not doing any of that fancy stuff, but now would be the time. I hope you can tell that the soap is getting pretty thick now. That's a trace. Look at that. It's like just sits right on top of the other soap. So I'm ready to put this in the mold. Okay. Right, it's pretty thick. So I'm going to go ahead and get my chopstick just to make some swirly dot designs on the top. Okay, that'll do it. Let's see. Okay, it's in there. So now I'm going to preheat my oven to about 170 degrees. I'm using an electric oven. It doesn't matter if your oven is electric or gas, but you may need to tweak this a little bit as you get to know your own oven. My oven is now preheating, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the oven. Now I'm going to be watching for certain things. I'm going to be watching for a gel stage. I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a minute, so don't worry about that. But also with the gel, sta gel stage, I'm going to be looking for signs of overheating. Overheating, when your soap overheats, it can crack, it can bubble, it can kind of like split and try and boil out. Those are all things that happen when you make hot process soap. So cold process oven process soap is kind of like a hybrid between cold process soap and hot process soap. We want to ensure that it goes through a full gel stage, but we don't want it to do anything crazy like hot process soap. So it's kind of tricky, you have to get used to it, but once you learn how to do it, you'll be an expert. So now my oven is warmed up to 170. I'm gonna put these in and I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. I'm starting out on the top, so what I'm going to do is after those five minutes, I'm going to come and check on my soap. I'm also going to turn it around and then move it to the lower shelf because sometimes the hot makes it too hot on the top or the hot will make it too hot on the bottom. So I kind of like to even it out and rotate it around from time to time, but I'm going to leave it on for five minutes and then I'm going to turn it off and let the residual warmth of my oven take it the rest of the way. Okay, my first five minutes is up, so I'm going to check on my soap. The first thing I notice when I open this is the smell of soap. I didn't even add any fragrance, but I can already smell that it smells like soap. And these molds are really, really cool for making the cold process oven process soap because you will start to see the gel on the side already starting, but it's not starting yet. I'm just rotating it and moving it to the lower shelf. Now I'm going to close up my oven and let it sit for another 10 minutes and then check on it after that. I may or may not need to turn my oven back on to bring up the heat. I'm not trying to cook the soap, I'm just trying to force it through that gel stage and we need heat to do that. I'm five minutes into that time frame. I talked about that 10 minutes that I was going to let it go on residual and I'm at a partial gel right now. So I just want to show you what that looks like. You can see the middle looks like Vaseline kind of, looks like jelly sort of. The outside still looks very opaque the way that we started. So what we want to do for cold process oven process soap is we want this, generally it starts in the center and moves its way outward, we want the whole thing to look like jelly. At which point 
we're gonna remove it from the oven because it doesn't need any more heat. So let me just let it finish up this 10 minutes and then I'll check on it. After my 10 minutes is complete, I can see that I still need a little bit more time in order to finish up this gel. So I'm going to turn them, move them to the top shelf and give it another 10 minutes. Okay, my timer is up. I'm gonna come in here and check on my soap. I'm gonna move it down really quick. Okay, so you can see it looks like it complete, completely went through its gel phase, but because I'm using these awesome clear soap molds, I can tell that my corners have not gone through a gel phase yet. I'm gonna give it another five minutes and then I'll come back and check on it. So these, Soap molds are awesome if you're making cold process oven process soap because it's all about the gel phase. Okay, my timer went off, so now I'm just gonna have a quick look at my soap. Look at those corners. Looks like it went through a complete gel stage, so that means I'm pretty much done here. So I'm gonna take it out and just let it cool down. Tomorrow I'll be able to cut it or sometime between 12 and 24 hours later. So one thing you'll notice is that on the very top here it's just a tiny bit bubbly. That's pretty normal. If it gets really bubbly or starts to crack then your soap got too hot. Those are things you want to look for. If you see lots of bubbles you'll know that your heat is just a little bit too intense. You want to cool it down a little bit maybe turn the oven off or open it up for a minute to let some of the heat come out. So this is where you really have to learn your oven. So certain ovens are gonna get really hot, certain ovens are not gonna get so hot. Another thing too is you just wanna use the lowest setting on your oven. Mine happens to be 170, so that's the setting I use. If you have a setting that's lower or if you don't have 170 or you have a warm setting, use whatever the lowest setting is. Like I said before, we don't need to cook it, we just need to warm it up to force it to go through this gel stage. Okay, I am on day two now, so just kind of let these sit. I could have cut them yesterday, they did get hard enough, but I usually just wait till the next day. I noticed too, um, so you might want to check out some other videos on this topic as well. Some other soapers have a different way of doing this and that's totally fine if it works for you. Um, other soapers sometimes cook the soap for a really long time. I don't find that it's necessary. My soap is like, <laughs> it's hard and ready. <laughs> it's ready to go. Um, so I only go to gel stage and that's it. And then I'm done. Man, this one's so hard it's just doesn't even want to come out. Alright, so I have a little bit that fell off here. I'm going to use this for a pH test. So, let's see, I kind of have, I can do some trims there. So let me get my pH testing strips. So I'll show you how nice and mild these turn out, even when they're so fresh, because when you force it to go through the gel stage, it gets more mild. Oh, here are my pH testing strips. Let's see. I usually cut them in half because they're all made of the same material and will last twice as long. So, there we go. A lot of people ask me where to buy these two. You can get them right on Amazon. That's where I get mine. Uh, you might be able to find them in your local store if you have a scientific store. Um, if not, then, you know, just check online. I'll make sure I go ahead and post a link for you. So, I'm going to... Um, basically get this a little bit wet, not where it's too much water, you know, a bunch of, bunch of water, but just wet enough so that I can take a pH reading. Okay. So I just, you know, I'm just making sure that I get some nice little bubbles here, not a ton of water, but just enough so that I can change the color of the strip and then once you do that 
you can compare it to these colors. So there's the 7 and there's the 8 right there down below on the second line. And this one looks like it's about halfway through. So I would say that this is about pH 7.5, so it's nice and mild. It's safe to use right away. That is the benefit of hot process and cold process oven process soap. That's a mouthful. <laughs> cold process oven process. Um, but you do probably want to let it cure for a week or two anyway just to make sure you can get all of the water to evaporate out so that your bar will last longer. So as far as the cure and being mild and being safe for skin, it's ready right away. But let it sit for a couple of weeks and it will be great. It will last a long time and you'll have really, really happy skin or happy customers. So now let's cut them and I'll show you what they look like inside. Wow, they really did get hard. <laughs> so, the soap gets harder when you do a water discount because there's not as much water in there, so there's not as much to cure out in the end. And that's why it's going to be ready sooner than your cold process, ordinary cold process soap. Because I used a 40% water discount and I made sure that it went through the gel stage by using my warm, not hot, just warm oven. Okay, come on out now. I got a stubborn bar here. There we go. I have a little bubble right there. It did get thick, or you know, it was thick when I poured it. soap on my hands. Okay. Okay, so here is a nice shot of the inside of the soap when you slice it. Just looks like ordinary soap. It is ordinary soap. It smells like ordinary soap. And it's so mild and gentle, you could use it now. What are you doing? I'm making soap videos. Yes. Soap. <laughs> yes. That's another way. So now I just is like this. Oh. Well, I don't always do everything right. You're silly. I know. Got it. All right, so there, now I have, I should have 16 bars of soap here, and they are just about ready to go in the bath. I'll just let them firm up a little bit. It's probably not even gonna take two weeks. And uh, one little secret, I, I'm gonna be end up, end up doing a separate video about it, but I discovered my cure time is cut dramatically by adding dehumidifiers to my curing room. So, I'm going to do a video on that separately and give you more details about that when I'm ready to do that. I'm a busy lady, so I, I do what I can when I get around to it. Most of the cure time is water coming out, so if you're curing in a humid envir environment, then it might take a little bit longer. And if you're in a dry area, like say maybe you live in Arizona, your bars probably cure really, really fast. So, here is the finished soap. I'm glad that you stopped by my channel today. and decided to learn how to make some cold process hot uh, oven pro <laughs> CPOP soap. <laughs> bye bye, take care. <laughs> Editing department. <laughs>